so you've learned how to make patterns and now you want to make a pattern brush. Let's do it. All right, I have a lot of pattern lessons out there, including a few here on YouTube. So once you make your pattern, all you need to do is three fingers swipe down and copy all. Now you're gonna get used to what this is gonna end up looking like as a pattern brush, and then you can experiment more with your actual pattern to get the different uh, colors that you want um, once you have more experience. So I copied that. You could also save it to your camera roll as an image, that works as well. I'm gonna turn that off and go to a fresh layer now I am in my brush set that I just made for the Summer Creative Retreat 2024, uh, which just ended if you're watching this right when I recorded this. And this is a brush set that's available for all of my newsletter subscribers, along with a ton of other things. So definitely go check that out. Um, I made that pattern that I just showed you in the summer creative retreat so that's kind of why that's on my mind right now and I'm just gonna go you can go to any brush set so I'm gonna tap the plus sign and that creates a new brush I'm gonna go to grain and this is where I want my pattern so I'm gonna tap edit and import if you saved your pattern as an image in your um, camera roll you can import that right there I just need to paste and I'm gonna tap once to get rid of that menu. And one thing you should know about this uh, little edit window is you can two finger tap to invert and you can also rotate. And then you can tap done once you have it how you like it. So with a black background, that means that no color is gonna show up when I use my brush. There's not going to be any color in the background. With a white background, that means I'm gonna have a lot of color in that background. So definitely experiment with these two versions and with other versions as well. And I'm gonna tap done. And there's my pattern. Woohoo! Let me just show you if we tap done, what that's gonna look like as is. So you can see I can do light pressure and have this light and then I can press harder to have it dark, but it's all very dark. And the other thing about it is when I pick up my pencil and put it back down again, the pattern doesn't line up. So there's a few changes that we need to make to make this a little bit more ideal. Let's go back into the brush and we're gonna play with scale. So that changes the scale of your design and we're also going to go to scroll down here and turn off the jitter, this offset jitter. So it's offsetting the pattern when you pick up your pencil and put your pencil back down. So turning that off means that when I pick up my pencil and I put it back down, the pattern picks up where it left off. With this type of pattern where it's, there's a lot of grays, I wanna go into rendering and go to light glaze. And that way I have a lot of color variation and also let's go down to Apple Pencil and turn off opacity. This is my preference and that's just so I can um, have the same level of opacity no matter what my pressure is on my pencil. It's not gonna register any pressure. Tap done. So now you can see that no matter how hard or soft my pressure is, it's all the same opacity. It's all, there's no faded out and darker. And you can see all the details because we changed the rendering to light glaze. Also, the pattern keeps going even though I pick up my pencil. Now there's overlap and that's because these aren't different colors. These are just different levels of transparency of the main color that you chose. So if you have a see-through layer and another see-through layer where they overlap, it's gonna be darker. So for this particular brush, um, you probably wouldn't want to pick up your pencil and put it down multiple times, um, and you would just need to be careful if you did. But look what we have going on over here. I have the same scale of my pattern no matter how big my brush is. This can be helpful in some situations, so you might want that sometimes. But I usually like to have a bigger pattern for a bigger brush and a smaller pattern for a smaller brush. I also want to look at how big and how small this brush is getting. I am never going to use a pattern brush that gets that small. 
So let's go back into it and go to properties. So that minimum size here is just all the way at the bottom. So I'm gonna bring that up and the maximum size, I'm gonna bring that up and tap done. You can also see our preview is changing with these changes that we're making. So we'll come back and fix that at the end. So now I'm on my minimum size here and that's pretty big. So that's probably not great. My maximum size here, uh, my brush size is pretty big, but you can see my scale is still the same. So we have some more adjusting to do. First of all, my minimum size can probably go smaller. My maximum size can probably go bigger. And now let's go back up to grain. To change the actual size of your flowers or your pattern, whatever it is, you can adjust the scale. This is great, except you're still going to end up with the same scale no matter what your brush size is. That's not what I want, so I'm going to go back into it. And that's this zoom setting. That's what I need to change. So when it's all the way up at cropped, then it's going to be the same scale no matter what your brush size is. And if it's all the way at the bottom where it says follow size, then it's going to really change size with your brush size. So the scale is changing size. So you can see my scale is super tiny here. And now all the way up, my scale is really big. <laughs> so that's quite a difference. Um, you can go back in and adjust this scale here to make a change to both of those. So now my largest brush size isn't so massive. My smallest brush size is even smaller though. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna go back down to properties. So there's a lot of back and forth. I'm gonna bring up my minimum size, maybe bump up my maximum size. It's really just your personal preference at this point. And then um, if you wanna go kind of in between the, the follow size and the cropped, it's just gonna do something similar where it's gonna change the size of your scale with your brush size, but maybe not as drastically. So let's tap and see what we have now. So I'm on the smallest size and I could see using that on a tiny detail for something. So I might leave that. My biggest size, mm, it's probably not as big as I could potentially use it someday, but if I need it bigger uh, someday, I'll just come back in and play with those adjustments again. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And the other thing I like to change is this hard edge. I don't like the hard edge on these. So I can go into shape. The default shape is this hard edge. Tap edit, tap import, and go to source library. These are provided by Procreate and they're free for you to use. I'm gonna go to this medium hard. You can play around with those textury ones and tap once to get rid of the menu, tap it done to get out of there. And now you can see I have a soft edge. Tap done again. So I'll just show you, I'll just move this over so you can see side by side, just this soft edge and the hard edge. And I can see that my preview window, which is what I'm seeing right here, looks good. If you are done with all of your size settings and your preview doesn't look great, go to properties and you can adjust the size of that right there. You can also go to color dynamics and I know we didn't have an opacity difference with pressure, but we could come down to color pressure and have a color difference with pressure. So maybe I'll bump this up to about 20% just to test it out and tap done. Now I can do light pressure and start to add pressure to my brush and watch it change colors. Watch when I choose a teal, it's gonna go down to purples. And then you can go back in and play around with the hue setting until you're happy. That changed quite a bit. So what it's doing is it's going with the first color you chose and it's sort of going this direction and choosing colors from this part of the color wheel when I add pressure to my pencil. So it went all the way over into the red. So that is because I had this setting bumped up higher. If I have it down lower, then as I press, 
it really it only went to purple so it really only kind of went to here um, so you can you can experiment with those I love playing with the color uh, dynamics so let's go back into the brush and just look through and make sure um, for the shape source if you end up choosing a textury brush or shape source here let's just do it for for fun here I'm going to choose this inky mess and tap done. The edge is going to look funny because it's just this shape in this position going do 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 do. So I like to scatter the shape right here. And then your edge is a little bit more random looking. So that's something to play around with as well. So remember, the grain settings are the most important with your scale and zoom and this offset jitter turning that off. Rendering, going to light glaze when you have different shades of gray in your pattern. Apple Pencil, I just turned opacity off. Properties, I played with the size quite a bit and then came back and played with preview. I don't adjust the preview size until I know what the other settings are gonna be. And once you're happy with your brush, you can go to about this brush and you can enter in all this information it's adding the photo and then creating a reset point, a tapping done, that's really gonna lock in your details into that brush. If you change the name and your name here and your signature here and you don't add a photo, it can still be edited by another person. That's as of right now, the last time I checked anyways, and um, maybe a Procreate update will fix that, but those are very important including the photo, and I have a YouTube video on making a logo stamp and a watermark stamp. And you can use those to add, the, and then just tap on this and go uh, choose from photos and choose whatever you make for your logo or watermark. So that's really important. And then after you have all those settings, right, and you've changed your name, let's, let's see, we can change the name. Um, Okay, so I've got my name changed on it. And let's say I wanna make another version of this brush and I don't wanna go through all of those settings again. I can duplicate it. And then I can pick a different pattern and go in and go to grain, edit, import and paste or bring it in from your camera roll. <laughs> That's the word I'm looking for. Or I can go and invert this and tap done, tap done again. And now I have a completely separate brush. And with this one, the background is filled in. So that's really fun. So I have the textury shape source. So that's what that looks like. I still have my color preferences, my color dynamics set and I inverted my pattern, and now I have the same pattern with two completely different looks, and I have two brushes. I can go in and I can change the name of this one. It's so much fun, it's so much fun. And if you're not familiar with my classes, I have dozens of Procreate classes, including, I think I'm up to five brush making classes, um, three or four really involved pattern making classes and just a ton of other illustrating classes out there. Let me show you one of my uh, examples of different ways that you can use pattern brushes. So this guy right here, I have a pattern brush that I did back here, a pattern that I did on the mug, and I also have a pattern on the sweater. So on clothes like this, I like to use a clipping mask. Well, the mug too. I like to add the pattern using a clipping mask and then you can play with the opacity and the blend modes to really make it look like it's really part of the item. And then you can also go into liquify on push and push the pattern around because it's on a clipping mask and get it to you know look a little bit more like it's supposed to on the shape that you have it on instead of just straight up and down for example 
Here's another example of some really fun patterns that I have on this guy right here. <laughs> I didn't move around this flannel pattern. I just, I angled my canvas just to get it a little bit angled here and there. But look at his hat. I have a knit pattern brush and I added it to this hat and then I moved it around to make it look a little bit more flowy with the hat. Super fun. Here's some of the classes that I have in my membership. I'll leave the link below. Um, the membership has a private community where I give tons of help. And so it's like having a private teacher. <laughs> and we have three Zoom calls every month with live lessons. In addition to all these classes, you get access to all of the recordings if you can't attend to the, the live lessons. And we have so much fun. Um, I have all some of my old classes that are also over on Skillshare. I have those all here as well, so you don't have to belong to Skillshare. But if you are on Skillshare, you can find me over there. I just haven't added classes for a while since I started my membership. So all of my new ones are in the membership. And sign up for my newsletter to get loads of free brushes, although I give most of my brushes away in my classes. And I hope you have fun making your pattern brushes. And I'll see you later.